What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know I haven't uploaded in a while, just to let you guys know, here's a little mini update. Uh, I'm still recovering from shoulder surgery as we speak, so uh, it's been kind of difficult uh, to get uploads onto the channel, so please bear with me. Once I have this brace off of me, I will be able to uh, upload a little bit more consistently, but uh, for right now, I'm, uh, I'm still in a little bit of pain, so uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, as for my uploads that were going on before the uh, channel took a a grueling halt. Um, also to give you guys an update with that, the PCL, the Pokemon Champions League, uh, I dropped out because I wasn't enjoying myself. Uh, not that I wasn't getting wins or anything, but um, I just wasn't having fun. So I decided to, uh, to drop out of there. Plus I want to focus on an NPL Miners, which is coming up. So uh, yeah, there's that. And of course, uh, for the GOT, we were knocked out uh, in the <coughs> round of 32 by Fallop, who I think is one of the strongest players in the tournament, so I'm not disappointed by that at all. Uh, got a little bit haxed, but um, it's Pokemon, so I'm not going to go too far into detail, but we did make it to the round of 32. I went 5-0 and in, in group stage, so there's that. Um, but yeah, so moving on. Today what we have for you is a Clan Wars replay. If you don't know what Clan Wars are, uh, because I haven't introduced it at all, uh, a bunch of people from the Draft League community and from the uh, Smogon community got together and we're having a... Um, we created clans and ours is named Pow uh, because I'm on Riz's clan, uh, Rizzy Pow. Uh, and um, we take on different clans and try to climb the leaderboard. At the moment we are number three on the leaderboard actually. We got placed in number three and uh, on the overall leaderboard and uh, in the all-out war which is basically our entire clan goes up against each other in uh, different categories be a draft format uh, OU, UU, all the different Smogon tiers, monotype, things like that and uh, I got placed into UU, I got asked, uh, I was, I actually asked to be placed in UU because I've been having a lot of fun in UU lately and I'm actually ranked pretty high on the ladder so um, I decided to go with UU and we are up against probably the scariest team uh, for our first uh, clan war, for our first all-out war, and the team is Fear, and we have people like Gypsy King and Monatui, Septile MC, uh, it's a, Jolt, it's a pretty scary team, let me tell you. Luckily, uh, I got paired up against Cheese Boy, who I know is a very good player. Um, but compared to Gypsy and Mono and all those other uh, scary, scary players, uh, I was glad to see that I wasn't up against any of them. And I got paired up against Cheese. And uh, this is the uh, the team matchup. Right away, we got into uh, we were the first out of the uh, clan to play. I don't think the rest of my clan has actually played any of their games. Uh, they're waiting until the weekend, I suppose. But um, we got put into uh, UU, like I said. And this is our matchup. This team I grabbed from one of uh, Joey's videos, Pokeame. And uh, I've been having a lot of success and a lot of fun with this team. It's uh, Shookaberry, Empoleon, Tail Glow, Electrium Z, uh, Zerkatry, uh, Scarfed Latias, uh, Standard Citrus Berry Swords Dance, Halucha, Mega Swampert with Rain Dance and Power Up Punch, and uh, I believe it's Swords Dance, three attacks uh, with Bug Bite Scizor. So this is the team. See the matchup? My opponent has uh, an Amoongus, which proves to be uh, an issue. Uh, a fortress, a Zerkatry of his own, a, a Mega B Drill, Conkelder, which is typically run Flame Orb uh, right now in UU uh, with Guts, Facade, uh, Mock Punch, Drain Punch, and uh, some other form of coverage. And he has a Volcanion as well, which I'm assuming is going to be choiced in some way. So, looking at the matchup, I see right away that Latias has a great matchup against uh, Cheese, and uh, it can pretty much blow everything back to a KO, everything except for the Fortress with Psychic. So, uh, I'm going to lead off with my Scarf Latias right away. As he's going to lead off with Beedrill. Now, a lot of people in UU that I've run into, uh, normally just you turn out, turn one, not expecting the Scarf Latias and lose their Beedrill. And Beedrill is a pretty big threat to this team in general. Uh, it can pretty much 2 KO everything on the team other than Scizor. Uh, but as you can see, he has great Scizor answers in Zerkatry, Volcanion, uh, and even Conkelder to some extent if it is Flame Orb. So... Uh, I do want to get rid of this Beedrill as early as possible. Cheese makes a nice play though and Heart Switches out into his Fortress, not wanting to risk the Choice Scarf. Uh, I do just fire off a Psychic. I get a, I get a crit, and this crit may or may not end up mattering later in the game. Uh, as you see, he uh, ends up at 58% and he's going to be able to uh, get up Hazards right here as I'm going to go straight out into my Empoleon, and I'm going to get up my Rocks as well. I'm threatening this thing with a Scald, so I don't expect him to want to stay in. Uh, as he is just going to pull a hard switch out into his Conkelder. Now, I don't have a good switch into his Conkelder, and I do see that it's Flame Orb, so I am going to have to stay in with my Empoleon. Like I said, I'm Shookaberry. I am not, um, uh, what's, 
What's the fighting berry? Chopple? There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit rusty, but um, yeah, I don't have a chopple berry. Uh, I have a shooka berry, so I will drop to a drain punch. Uh, I do get off a of scald, though, and he does crit me with drain punch. Now, I'm not sure if this mattered or not. I don't think it did, uh, but he's going to get back up to 82%, which is awesome because this is actually a Latias range, and because his fortress took a hit uh, and it's sitting at 64%, um, it's not really a good switch into Latias because you guys saw earlier that the crit did uh, 48%, so no crit would do roughly 33 so that's in 2-hit KO range after rocks. So I'm just going to fire off a Psychic right here. He's going to stay in with one of the biggest threats to my team being his Conkeldur, so that's going to go straight down. Now he is going to go Fortress. I debated on this turn clicking Psychic or not um, because I knew he would spin. Because looking at his team, Beedrill doesn't want to take the rocks, nor does Volcanion, and his Amoongus is pressured by the rocks as well. So I figured that he would want to spin, but I didn't want to risk him gyro balling and doing a ton of damage to my Latias. So I decided to switch out the safer play. Now I could have 2 it KO'd him, but I was like, you know what? Let's just go into Zerkatry. We can get up a, uh, a Tail Glow on this turn. His Fortress is back to 58%, but I am going to get up a Tail Glow. And now his Amoongus comes in, and I end up calking. Uh, the difference between Hidden Power Ice and Gigavolt Havoc. And it turns out that Gigavolt Havoc is actually an Oko on, um, on standard Amoongus spreads. Uh, unless he's fully specially defensive, I will knock him out with a Gigavolt Havoc as opposed to an HP Ice. So I just go straight for the Gigavolt Havoc. He, no he does not have an immunity on his team. This is the correct play. But it turns out that he is max spedef. But what this is going to do is it's going to uh, open up the door to Swampert. Now that I know that he doesn't have any physical defense investment, I can fire off Earthquakes with my Mega Pert. And his team is looking very weak to that. Now he's going to go into Beedrill knowing that I can't wake up on this turn and he is going to uh, force me out. I'm going to go straight into Scizor, as he is going to go for the U-turn on this turn, which is a good play, um, as he's going to be able to pivot out into his Volcanion. Now, um, I am max speed Scizor, which means I outspeed uh, a modest Volcanion. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sack off my Scizor to the Volcanion, and I'm going to get off a knockoff, uh, just to see if he's timid or... Um, or modest because my Swampert is also max speed Jolly. So if I outspeed him with my Scizor, it means that I outspeed him with my Swampert. And that means I can bring it straight in after this turn. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to just knock off this Volcanion and I'm going to get rid of its choice specs as we see right there. He is going to go for a Steam Eruption. He's going to knock me clean out even without the choice specs. Very threatening Mon. As now I'm going to bring in my Swampert. I am able to 2 it KO almost his entire team except for the Fortress. So he is going to stay in with his. Uh, Volcanion, and he's going to let it go down to the Earthquake. Sorry about that. And uh, now he's going to bring in a, a Circuitry. And the way he brings this in, um, at first I'm thinking, okay, well, he's going to go for Grass Knot, right? So I'm going to switch out, and I'm actually going to go straight into my Halucha. And I'm going to scout to see if this thing is choiced or not. So he's going to go for Energy Ball. And he's going to do a, a clean amount of damage to me. Now, if this thing is choiced, um, it is going to switch out here. So... That's exactly what I'm going to scout for. I'm just going to go for the Substitute, I believe, on this turn. Uh, as, no, I'm going to pull a double. Excuse me. I'm going to go out into my own Zerka Tree because if he wasn't choice, then I wanted my Halucha to come back in and get its Citrus Berry um, because Rocks would put it in range of Citrus. And Zerka Tree is just here for Sleep Fodder, essentially, so I can sack it off to his Zerka Tree and then just revenge it later. So that's not a problem. He's going to go for a Poison Jab and knock out my Zerka Tree, which is fine. Now what I'm going to do is bring in my Latias again, the huge threat to his team. Again, it's Scarfed. He doesn't have a switch in anymore. Uh, he is going to bring in, however, his Amoongus and sack it. So I sacked off my Zerka Tree. He sacks off his Amoongus, meaning that nothing else will go to sleep. So this is good. So now he's going to bring in his Fortress. Uh, sorry, his Zerka Tree again. And again, by the way he brings this in, I'm assuming it's Choiced. Um, and I'm going to switch out into my Swampert. Now, very risky play. If he had gone for Energy Ball here, I could have lost the game but I assumed that he wouldn't. So he's going to go for Dazzling Gleam, uh, and he's only going to do 35% to me. I'm pressuring him out with my Swampert, so what I'm going to do is just fire off an Earthquake in case he decides to uh, Dazzling Gleam again. That way my Latias can win the game. And uh, now that he brings in Fortress, Fortress can't really hurt me, so I'm going to go for a Rain Dance as he go for, goes for a Spike. Not that that really matters. My last two Mons are off the ground. So I'm going to go for a Waterfall. I almost get the roll, and I'm going to bring him down to 3%. But he goes for Spike again, not even weakening me, which is nice. As now I have two more turns of Rain, I'm going to be able to Waterfall the Fortress. And uh, thanks to the 
crit from earlier, Earthquake into Rain Danced Waterfall into another Rain Danced Waterfall was able to knock him out, but I don't think the crit made a big difference in that uh, in that regard. Maybe he would have been able to bring in his Fortress more often against my Latias rather than having to sack his Amoongus, which was a big deal, but Swampert, because of its raw power, is able to knock out Amoongus from the range it was at even after a round of Black Sludge uh, with Earthquake because it's not physically defensive, so that wouldn't have been a bother at all. Anyway, uh, he's going to go into his Beedrill, that's going to drop straight to a Waterfall, and his last mon is Zerkatry, which even if it's Choice Scarfed, it would have to lock itself into a Grass move, which wouldn't matter because I have Latias and Halucha left in the back, but I am faster even if it was Scarfed, and I'm able to knock it out with an Earthquake. So that's going to be our first match for Clan Wars. Uh, this is, of course, my only match. Now, the thing is, there are five spots in the draft. Uh, format. There are five players that will be playing in it, uh, but we only have four set. So there is a chance that I might be able to take up one of the spots. I'll see with Riz. But uh, for right now, this should be the only match uh, that will be coming out of this clan war. Uh, I will hopefully be featuring other matches uh, from our clan's war, uh, kind of like uh, Joey does when it's SPL and um, he's going up against, uh, they're going up against different teams and he features his teammates' games. So, I might be doing that live comms, maybe post comms, uh, looking at the games. But, uh, that's yet to be seen. Again, like I said, I'm still recovering from shoulder surgery, so this might be the only upload in a while. Uh, but for all of you that are watching, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, I will be getting back to a regular upload schedule. I do apologize for the delay. And uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like for me down below. I'm going to try to get Cheese's link. Uh, if you guys want to go check out his channel, I'll try to leave a link for that uh, in the description as well. Actually, I know exactly where to find his link. It's on my team sheet for the NPL Miners for some reason. <laughs> so I will leave you guys that in the description if you want to go see uh, either his side. I don't know if he's going to be uploading for this or, um, or just the rest of his content. So definitely go check that out. Leave a like for me down below if you guys did enjoy, of course. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.